Thanks everyone for, for uh, sticking around and for staying awake. It's, it's after midnight my time, so if I'm a little blurry, just uh, for, forgive me. Um, so my name is Colm, I'm from a company called Realize It. We're, kind of for lack of a better description, we're an adaptive learning platform. That's not what we set out to be. What we set out to do when the company was founded 10 years ago was to have some kind of positive impact on students. Um, whether that's improving outcomes, making the learning more efficient, just something to make lives better or easier, you know, give a student an opportunity that they wouldn't have had. We are founded by educators. Um, they were uh, high school teachers, secondary school teachers in Ireland. And you know, that's what they started out with the goal of. We spent the first couple of years building the product and trying to figure out all the kind of technologies that we needed to be able to, to do some of the things. We kind of fell into the, the, the bucket of adaptive learning. Um, but it's not what we set out to do. Um, we've kind of in, over the you know once we had the kind of the thing built, we then spent years trying to get people to use it, right? But now we're at the point where we have people using it, and what we're trying to figure out is how should they use it more effectively? How can it actually have the impact that we, we set out for it in the first place? And what I'm going to show you is some work that we're doing with um, with uh, UCF and, and a few others. Um, looking at how we can make sense of, of, of what students are, you know, what kind of impact are we having on students? How should we be talking to students? Um, and stuff like that. So the, well, didn't really show up very well, it's kind of, I did this in PowerPoint, but I mean, what we're trying to do is understand how students are using it and how does that, how is that change compared to how they normally use a system or how it compare, compares to traditional settings? And what, what we can do with that information, how do we, talk to students then? How do we talk to faculty to tell them how to use it? Um, what I'm going to show you is, let me go across to here, is a little animation which kind of captures some of what I'm talking about. So hopefully you can see all this. So as part of the work, um, we wanted to kind of, like I say, get, get a handle on, on student behaviours. One of the things I did was visualise how students actually move through the system. I have the amount of effort they're putting in across the x-axis and the progress they're making in the y-axis. I want you to see, like, each student is represented as a little dot, and you can see it's day zero, so they're all right down at the corner. What I'm going to do is click play, and you're going to see a course play through a system, and you're going to see students kind of engaging in different behaviors and doing things that they wouldn't normally be, uh, normally do. Um, and kind of, you know, in, the, in this, uh, in this this psychology course, students were given full agency. They could go as fast or as slow as they wanted to go. So, you know, the, the instructor had to manage a lot of different types of behaviors and a lot of new behaviors that they wouldn't maybe traditionally see. So let me click play. And you see students kind of racing out of the blocks, some shooting, running ahead of the rest of the group, most of the course kind of sticking together, working kind of step by step, moving from objective to objective. There was eight objectives in this course. So the it was a 15 week course broken into eight sections. So you see students logging in, they do their little bit of work, you know, halfway through the course. Most students are about halfway through the course. And um, some students have been finished since day 20. You're seeing students kind of spread out in terms of the amount of effort that they're putting in. Some students are able to put in a very small amount of efforts to make the same amount of progress that some students have to do a lot of effort. And um, we see something funny now at the end. See that kind of rush right at the end for all of the students to finish. The deadline is coming and they all put in this big, big spurt at the end. What we did was to look at the kind of different, well, some of the work we did with, with UCF was to look at the different um, prototypes of students. So we have four that we identified. Let me bring them up. I'm going to replay these guys. Let me turn that off and bring them back. So we have the, the, the hair. This is a, these are the guys who shoot out of the blocks, race ahead of the rest of the group. We have the tortoise and the, and the frog. Um, it's easier to give them kind of names like this to talk about them. Um, so the tortoise makes slow, steady progress. The frog does something very similar, but does it in little hops. Right? And then we have the kangaroo. Kangaroo's a real interesting guy. We're going to talk about him a little more in a second. You'll see what this guy does. So the course starts, and the hare races ahead. You see the little blue dot? 20 days, he's finished. Most of the rest of the course, or rest of the, the, the group, is still you know, maybe only a quarter of the way through the course. Um, you can see the tortoise making slow and steady progress, logs in every day. It's kind of what we would probably typically tell a student to do, right? You have to make slow, consistent, steady progress, or do what the frog is doing, log in once a week, do a setup, block of work. We're coming up on day 80, and the kangaroo is still sitting still. <laughs> oh, he makes a little hop, and he goes silent again. So he did nothing for 80 days, and then he goes quiet again. Everybody else is pretty much finished, and here goes the kangaroo. Are you ready? There he goes. 
So when we have people talking about um, you know, the, uh, what, are, what are effective behaviors, what, how should we be inter intervening with students, how should we be giving them advice, how should we be giving them feedback, we have to understand, well, what are students doing? We've given them the system and we've let them kind of use it. Now we want, we've kind of taken the approach of, you know, give it to them, they'll figure it out. Right? And we do the same with instructors. Here you go, you guys are the experts, use it, you figure it out. But I think what we need to do is start to look at, well, how can we give back proper feedback? How, how should instructors talk to these students? That, that kangaroo, I mean, he did nothing for 80 days, but not only did he go on to be successful and complete the whole course, he put in far more effort than anybody else. He completed, what, 800 learning activities in a couple of days. In terms of efficiency, he's far by far the most efficient. Um, but we, we, we have a lot we kind of have to figure out about, about these behaviors. Um, and that's kind of some of the questions and some of the things that we're, that we're working on. Let me see if I can click that. So we have these things that we're interested in studying. We're working with UCF and some other institutions with Colorado Technical University. These are problems that we can't solve by ourselves. We're not experts in, in this kind of stuff. That's why we, we, you know, I think this is a great example of, of a partnership between a vendor and, and institutions where we're each bringing something different to the table. We can do the data analysis. We know our system. We can do this kind of analysis. I can find these students, but that's about as far as I can take it. I don't, I don't have the expertise to take it to the next level to answer some of these questions. Like, um, does experience that faculty have built up in traditional settings transfer to adaptive learning? I don't know how to answer that question, but I hope Chuck and Patsy know how to answer because they're, they're, they're the guys we're working at. Um, you know, so we have a whole area around uh, intervention strategies that we want to look at. We have area around changing student mindsets. One thing we see in, in the system is students don't often, I think, know that they're in an adaptive platform. We see them engaging in the same kind of behaviors they would if they were in a traditional setting. Right? They, they're not kind of taking advantage of the fact. We see many different ways in which students can be successful. We had students who do a block of work at the start, go quite in the middle, and do all the rest of the work at the end. Or like that kangaroo who leaves everything to the last minute. Maybe there are you know, external life factors that are, are causing the student to work like that. So we, for the students who aren't successful, maybe there's some kind of mindset that we can change or explain to them that they have other options now. They don't have to do it the way that we always suggest they should do it. They don't have to follow, they don't have to be a, a, a frog or a, a, or a tortoise. They can be a, a hare or a kangaroo. So these are some of the things we're working on. Anybody's interested in, in working on them with us or in any way, shape, or form, I'd love to, love to talk to you. Thanks. Thank you.